Welcome to the Library Love Fest podcast. I'm Virginia Stanley. I'm Lainey Mays. We are the library marketing team at HarperCollins Publishers. Join us every week as we present buzzworthy books through author interviews, conversations with editors, and expert opinions from librarians like you. Enjoy the show. Book Buzz, HarperCollins Book Buzz. Check it out. Book Buzz, HarperCollins Book Buzz. Brought to you by Library Love Fest. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Library Love Fest podcast. This is Lainey, and I'm joined by Virginia Stanley. How is everyone? I know you can't answer, but just know that we are putting it out through the podcast and we hope you're doing well. And we're back with another round of Library Reads announcement for the July uh, Library Reads list. We have two titles on the list. Yeah, we're so excited. Two out of the 10 are ours. Yippee skippy. Library Reads is a list of 10 books that librarians vote on all around the country, and we have two of them, so we're very excited. Yay! Uh, Yeah. Should we tell them what they are? No, let them guess. Okay. All right. (laughs) See you next week. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Take good care. (laughs) Okay. Virginia, do the honors. I'm doing the honors? Yeah. That's gracious. Okay. Well. So, as Lainey said, we have two books on the list. I mean, two books out of all the books that are published in one month, 10 books are selected. And that in and of itself has got to be, I don't know, that's that's quite the feat. But librarians vote. They vote on what they love. And we are thrilled to say two of these books are ours. And they are by Paul Tremblay whose book, The Paul Bearers Club, has landed him on the list now for the second time. Yes, he had Survivor Song in July of 2020. Yes, and the other book on the list is Sugar and Salt by Susan Wiggs, also her second time on the library reads list. So congratulations to both of these beloved authors very very different books very different writers um and uh your experience your reading experience of their books will be quite different but (laughs) fulfilling nonetheless funnily enough her book uh prior book the lost and found bookshop which has ties to this book sugar and salt was also on the july 2020 library reads list so they both have two books on the library reads list so that means if they get their third book which is not to be read yet but in the future um if that book makes it they'll both make the hall of fame so exciting so here's to paul and susan congratulations on making the list two years to the month yeah so if they were both on july 2020 and now they are both on july 2022 so not too shabby they are consistently wonderful and deliver the goods and they have such uh just a great readership and big fans in, in the library world so really excited and they're so lovely and we had them at library conferences and we've talked to them on live and they're just wonderful so couldn't happen to two nicer people two people who are such big supporters of libraries they have such great stories which you're going to hear in a little bit each of them are going to say thank you themselves this is our favorite part of our monthly libraries podcast episode because we get to hear from the author's directly and they have a, an acceptance speech of sorts a la the oscars and um <laughs> i mean not that we want to get too big-headed that we compete with the oscars but i think that it's pretty important well i don't think the oscars could top this i mean come on oscars is one thing library reads list one out of ten spots and That's you make true. it hello my god all the books that are published every single month i mean it's a big deal so yeah. Oscars, Schmoskers, Library <laughs> Reads for the win. Yeah, you could argue that this is more competitive, actually. Totally. Oh, my God. The pedal is always on the metal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Without further ado. Yes. Okay. So let's hear from Susan Wiggs first. 
Hi everyone, it's Susan Wiggs, sometimes known as your mother's favorite writer. I'm thrilled to be talking to library people about my newest novel, Sugar and Salt. I practically grew up in the library, from the historic Greek Revival building in Olean, New York, to the mid-century modern masterpiece in my current hometown of Bainbridge Island, Washington. Lately, I've come to appreciate our libraries more than ever. I'm talking about coronavirus, incubation period, N95, social distancing, self-quarantine, personal protection equipment, shelter in place, lockdown, rapid antigen test. None of these terms were familiar to us a couple of years ago. Now they're our daily routine. We don't leave the house without going through a calculus that would have seemed absurd to us back then. Do I have my PPE? My hand sanitizer? My vaccine record? A list of contacts? A government test kit? It seems risky to be around people these days. We've been forcibly isolated. Our own sense of identity has been undermined by this unwelcome plot twist. We all came up with a lot of coping strategies, but the most effective of all for me, and probably for most of you, is what I consider one of the most basic building blocks of life, books. That's right, the thing that's getting me through the pandemic is something I've turned to all my life. Something I'm fond of saying because it's such a simple truth is this. You're never alone when you're reading a book. It's the one form of humanity you can trust. You can safely curl up with a book and not worry about getting coughed on or contaminated. I'm so proud that Sugar and Salt is a library pick because I know a little something about libraries. I know the library has risked everything to preserve our cultural freedom. There are no politics when it comes to the library, no controversy. The library is a free, open community asset, and that is not controversial. We Americans can argue about a lot of things, but the library is not one of them. So let's get back to my original point, and then I'll let you go read a book. When you think of the things that are bringing you through the dark days of the pandemic, think of the creators, the writers whose books brought you comfort and enlightenment, the artists who gave you visual delights, the cookbook authors that taught you something new, the musicians whose talent soothed your soul, the filmmakers who gave you a diversion, the journalists telling the truth. These creators all have a home in the library, and I'm so proud that Sugar and Salt has found a home there, too. Hmm. Wow. I'm pretty much wrapped up the last two years. And... All the challenges that everyone has had to face and writers, you know. She's so right. It's it's very, it's harder to leave the house, no matter if you're fearful or not. I mean, just like the logistics of leaving the house um, have become significantly harder to do. And so it's really nice to have the comfort of, of found friends when you have a book nearby. That was really sweet. It was beautiful, really, you know, and She's always given props to to librarians, but um, to hear it in this context is really, you know, it's, uh, really beautiful. She's she's just wonderful. Yeah. She totally gets it, and uh, she's a favorite for many reasons among librarians. So that was really neat. Yeah. Mm, thank you, Susan, and congratulations. Okay, so let's hear from Paul. Hi everyone, this is Paul Tremblay, and I want to say thank you, librarians, for choosing the Paul Bearers Club for the July 2022 Library Reads list. I'm deeply honored and so gratified that you choose this weird coming-of-age story mixed with a Gen X memoir and a horror novel. I can't help but think, if only my novel's protagonist, Art Barbara, had befriended a librarian, he might have had an easier go of things. I'd also like to share a bigger thank you for all that librarians and libraries do for our communities, particularly in the midst of our age of misinformation and fear. To quote Ray Bradbury, without libraries, what have we? We have no past and no future. I'd like to give a special mention to Millbury Public Library in Massachusetts, at which I did a wonderful event last summer. Earlier this year, when it was discovered that one of their patrons checked out four young adult books dealing with LGBTQ themes, with the intent to never return those books, to keep them off the shelves. 
Former library trustee Jeff Raymond rallied the library's community, and the end result was 250 copies of a dozen different titles purchased for the library and also to be shared in other libraries within the system. Libraries are a beacon of hope, free speech, and tolerance, and have never been more important to the health of our communities. Thank you for all you do. I got like kind of emotional hearing that. That's that's really sweet. I also love that he said his main character, if only he knew a librarian, it might've turned out a little differently. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah, that says it all. And man, what a, what a, what a neat story too about um, how the community rallied together to, um, you know, replace those books and then some. So, um, you know, look, authors get it and they, you know, they know the value in the um, libraries and the power of community and um, that it is a safe space and it's, it's meant to be a safe space. Um, and so, yeah. Hats off to both of them as humans, as writers, as champions of libraries. Mm. It's really wonderful. So if you're wondering how you can find out more about books that are upcoming for the list that you might want to read to vote on, it's always due the first of the month prior to publication. Sign up for our newsletter because we send out a list every month for the next month's list. So you have a whole month's worth of reading and voting to do. If you want that list, um, you can either sign up for our newsletter or go to librarylovefest.com and check it in. Um, you have you have lots of reading to do. And if you want to be sure to support these authors, like the two that made the list today, you can read and vote. And I'm, I know that they would appreciate it. So thank you for voting. And we hope to see you next month for the August list. Fingers crossed. I hope we're on the list again, Lainey. And just just to reiterate what Lainey is saying, and it's totally true, Lainey, you do a great job pulling together books that we really feel, I don't know, just hit the mark and are great library reads um, suggestions. And so if you do go to librarylovefest.com and you can sign up there to receive our newsletter, you'll get this. And it's great because it gives you suggestions and a little description of, of books and how to download them and read them and, you know, Look, we know you have a lot of books to read, but just as long as you just read the HarperCollins ones and skip the other publishers, that's what we really care about. <laughs> You'll be good. You'll have plenty of time, actually. Oh, yeah. You could read them twice, then vote. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, congratulations, Susan. Congratulations, Paul. And librarians, thanks for reading and thanks for voting. And uh, like Lainey said, hopefully we'll be back next month to talk about some new library reads on the list. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Library Love Fest podcast. For more information on this week's episode, go to librarylovefest.com. Enjoying the show? We would love to hear what you think. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at Library Love Fest and on Instagram at Harper Library. Be sure to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and share the show with a friend. See you next week.